but they shall fly down about the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall lay, lay their hand on Edom and Moab, and the people of Ammon shall obey them. The Lord will utterly, utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river. Could that be the Euphrates? Maybe. And strike it in the seven streams and make men cross over dry shod. There will be a highway. What a neat picture for the remnant of his people back to Israel, right? Who will be left from Assyria as it was for Israel in the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. So let's just backtrack for a minute. In the midst of this judgment, destruction, death, nothingness, there's going to spring up a tiny little baby and he's going to represent life and power spiritually. And how's that power going to manifest itself? Well, take a look at Luke 4 again. He's going to heal the brokenhearted. He's going to take care of orphans. He's going to look out for the least of these and take care. And that's going to be his government for right now. And that's what's going to mark his kingdom. It's going to be humble and lowly and looking out for the needs of others. And it's going to be peaceful and orders are going to be restored. And there's going to be rightness, right judgment. And even those divisions politically and that are so complicated over in the Middle East and Israel, putting those back together. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, t chapter 12 goes with chapter 11 and it's beautiful. It says then, in that day, in that kingdom age, in other words, you will say, the people of God will say, Oh, Lord, I'll praise you, though you were angry with me. You, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation, the coming kingdom, whether it be Israel, Jew, Gentile. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song, he also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. <laughs> Boy, my mind goes right to that, the woman at the well, the Sumerian, and how God or Jesus treated her. An, a, a societal outcast, one he couldn't even relate to or see or be in the presence of. And boy, he knew her, didn't he? knew all men and women. He knew her. He saw through her. And boy, he gave her opportunity to be ministered to and he did minister to. And that's what it's going to be like in his, his coming kingdom. And we're going to be praising him for those things, those that salvation. And in that day, you will say, the people of the Lord will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples. <laughs> Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. Boy, Isaiah loves that uh, name. He uses it 27 or 28 times in the book of Isaiah. And I read this and I think, you know, we're, we're moving towards that city. And Abraham even thought he was a pilgrim, Hebrews tells us. He, he had faith and he was a pilgrim. He, he was looking forward to the heavenly city with its foundations. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so it applies even here as we live now. Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. And so these are the things that we as the people of God now are to do as well. Even as we pilgrimage or we're aliens just kind of going through this life, going to the next, these are the things we do. Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples, make mention that his name is exalted. Boy, it just gives it to us right there. Now, why did we go through all this? 
<laughs> and uh, read these scriptures and those things. Here's the things that I take away in no particular order. I just jotted them down. But think of, see if they resonate with you. God moves and works even through powerful nations. He has control of even that to get his purposes and plans done and completed, and he will complete them. Boy, his word is sure and true, and if it's spoken and told, it will come to pass. Titus tells us we serve a God that cannot lie, not chooses whether or not. He cannot lie. And so if he says something, whether he tells it to you in 700 a, or a BC or 33 AD, or whether there's an intervening time of several years in your life where you're saying, where are you, God? His promises will come to pass. Whether, don't be offended by this, whether you or I believe that or not. Another thing it tells me here is, or another thing that I take away here is that humility is valued in the kingdom of God. Humility. And as we fight and wrestle with our old nature, you know, may it be that God keeps us in humility. If he could come as a baby, right, in a slobbery bucket of livestock spit stuff, I mean, how much more humble than that can our Lord be? Humility is valued in the kingdom. Another thing, especially at this time of the season, I got several, so I could be going on here for a while. <laughs> but like Israel, they were getting off the track. They were, they were disconnected from their moorings, and they just kind of were drifting, drifting farther away. Less reading of the word, less uh, time properly worshiping according to what he'd set up. Like Israel, boy, don't we need to settle down? And to listen, right? And to spend time and to fellowship, not out of any sense of drudgery with the Lord, but out of a, a re love response to all these things that he's done for us. Amen. Amen. And so at this time of the year, wow, right? <laughs> it, the, it's, it, when, when, when you read through these words, it doesn't really necessarily make a hill of beans which Christmas card you pick out to send to everybody. <laughs> They're nice. I like Christmas cards too. But boy, to worry ourselves and to stress over all that, that's not what he has for us. Here's another thing I take from this. We've got two more or three. Even when his people disobey, although there's going to be consequences, boy, God is still loving and graceful and especially this, I don't know if, that's the right way to say it. But is this too long suffering with us? <laughs> right? Boy, these people, these peoples. I mean, if I would have been God, I'd say, how could you not listen to me? How? I've been telling you for all these years. Why do you continue to turn your back on me? He, he says that somewhat, but then he always gives the out. The escape hatch, the plan, the hope. How about this takeaway? <clears throat> Don't be afraid and trust in the Lord even when it hurts. Right? Uh, don't, don't be afraid. You know, he, he told them in chapter 10, I don't want you to be afraid. And yet Assyria came and wiped out their lands. They were hurt. They were bruised. They were like Jacob, right, who got his joint when he was wrestling with God, he was hurt, and yet he was seeking a blessing from God. And so maybe some of us are going through those sorts of things. We're thinking to myself, Lord, I'm following you, and I'm hurting, and I don't know why. I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do what you're telling me to do. And, and God says, listen, trust. Keep trusting. Keep on. Keep persevering. And don't be afraid. I'm in control. Finally, this. And we'll end and we'll pray. We crave lots of things. Might be food, 
might be leisure time, it might be weekends, it might be a new house, it might be a new car, it might be a better position, um, it'd be a different career, a different relationship. I don't know. I'm just naming some. But what we really crave, Abraham and the other shows us, is that life that we're going to be living for eternity. That's what we really crave. The world to be set back in rightness and perfect peace. And that's what the baby came to show us, to do for us. That's the heart and the meat of the gospel. Right? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for these beautiful words, but not just beautiful, true and right and powerful. Lord, as we prepare our hearts for your coming celebration on December 25th, may we not forget that or these words where you brought hope and life out of complete devastation in the life of this country or these countries. Lord, I pray that you would search our hearts and our minds and powerfully come to us and relate to us what this means for each and every one of us. And as we go forth in this holiday season, we would remember who you are, what you've done, what you'll continue to do, and what you're setting up, the big picture. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys.